So we're looking at question one here, and this is on the John Cook, start of the John Cook vignette. Which of the following statements are correct? Statement one, statement one and three, or statement two and three? So we're gonna have three statements up here, and it looks like they're right here, statement one, two, and three. We'll be able to ignore four for this question. Um, so let's read down to there and then see what we, which of these are we think are correct. John Cook and Adrian Toison are CFA level two candidates. The two engage in discussion over currency exchange rates in which they make several statements. Cook makes the following statements. Statement one, the offer price is always higher than the bid price. This statement is going to be correct. Um, dealers sell on the offer and they buy at the bid. And so they need the offer price to be higher than the bid price in order to make some spread and make some money. So statement one is correct. So let's take a look at statement two and three now. Statement two, the party in the transaction which requests a two-sided price quote has the option but not the obligation to deal at either the bid or the offer quoted by the dealer. If the party chooses to trade at the quoted prices, the party is said to have either hit the bid or paid the offer. If the base currency is being sold, the party is said to have paid the offer. If the base currency is being bought, the party is said to have hit the bid. So this is gonna be, um, this last statement here, or the first portion of this up until here is correct. And then um, the last two sentences are where it goes a little haywire. So th these are gonna be flip flops. So if the base currency is sold, the party is said to have hit the bid, not paid the offer. And then if the base currency is being bought, the party is said to have paid the offer, not hit the bid. So statement two is gonna be incorrect. So we can, let's go down here and take a look. So which of the following statements are correct? We've got statement one, so A could be right, B could also be right. Statement two is in C, so we can go ahead and cross that off. So now we just need to determine whether three is correct. Uh, so statement three, the bid offer spread a dealer provides to most clients typically is slightly narrower than the bid offer spread in the interbank market. Uh, so interbank spreads are gonna be tighter than dealer spreads, and that's really just because I think that, uh, you know, the interbank market, that's gonna be trading trading between different institutions, and um, th it's gonna be bigger dollars, probably more liquidity, so those spreads will just be a little tighter. Um, so we can say that statement three will be incorrect as well and conclude that only statement one is correct, A. Question two, is Cook's demonstration of arbitrage as outlined in statement four correct? So this is where we left off on the last question we read up until here. So we'll start here and then it looks like statement four is mainly what we're gonna be looking at though based on the question. So as the discussion continues, Toison asks, asks Cook to explain how an arbitrage opportunity would exist in the interbank market. Cook responds by making the following statement. Suppose that the current spot USD CAD price in the interbank market is 0 0.8214, uh, 0.8216. So this is gonna be the bid in the interbank market and then this will be the offer in the interbank market. If a dealer showed a misaligned price quote of 0 0.8218 and 0.8219, then an arbitrage opportunity exists. So we needed to determine whether this statement here is correct. Um, and so what we can conclude here is we need to look at these bids and offers in, in order to see if we could make a riskless profit. So in order to make a riskless, riskless profit, we would need to be able to buy at this offer, which is what the inner, either at the interbank or at the dealer, and then be able to simultaneously sell at that bid um, and make a profit there. And so what we're essentially looking for is an offer that's below the bid in these quotes, um, or it, vice versa, it wouldn't matter which side it was on. So since our offer here is 0.8216, we can buy at 8216, and then we can go simultaneously sell it at the dealer quote um, for 0.8218. So we could conclude that we could make, you know, it's obviously a very, very tiny profit, 0 0.8, 0.0002 uh, profit on that. Um, so that's gonna be two risk-free um, pips is what that would be called. 
So we've determined there is an arbitrage profit. Let's go back to our answers here. We didn't read the answers at the beginning, so let's look at them. So is it uh, is Cook's demonstration of arbitrage correct? No, because the given quote uh, price, no arbitrage opportunities exist. We concluded that that's incorrect. And we've got yes, because the dealer can make three risk-free pips, or yes, because the dealer can make two risk-free pips. That's going to be two, as we um, determined earlier, uh, because we're going to be buying at this price and selling at this price. The difference is 0 0.0002, which is going to be two, which is also called two pips. Answer C. All right, we've got question three here now. Based on the data given in Exhibit 1, the current all-in bid rate for delivery of GBP against Euro in three months is closest to, we've got three numbers here. Um, let's go back up and read though. So we got to here on the last um, on the last question. So let's just read this last paragraph here and then it looks like we'll be looking at Exhibit 1. Jessica Pearson, CFA, is a friend of Toisans. Pearson works as a foreign exchange dealer in Sydney, Australia. She's contemplating trade opportunities in the euro pound currency pair. The following are the current spot rates and forward points being quoted for the euro pound currency pair. So we've got spot rates and forward points. Um, so how this works here is we've got our spot rate up top. So we've got our bid and our offer. And these points are just going to be subtracting, um, adding or subtracting, depending on whether it's plus or minus, from these from these two rates. So, um, and these are going to be quoted in pips, which is very very important uh, distinction to remember. Um, so basically, interpreted another way is the one month forward rate is going to be 1.2455 minus 6.5 pips. So that being said, we are looking for that three month delivery. Um, so we're going to be looking at that three month rate here. So we're going to be looking at, and we're doing um, the uh, bid rate. So bid. It's quoted first, then the offer is quoted second. So we're going to be looking at this bid um, and we'll be subtracting this amount from it. If we were doing the offer, then it'd be kind of the same thing. We'd just be using this amount. So basically what that's going to look like is we've got 1.2455, that start the spot bid rate, and then we're going to subtract off 0.234 pips, um, which is going to be 0 0.00234 uh, which is going to equal 1.24316 and rounded to the closest number is going to give us answer A. And the the way we can get this number too, um, just to kind of maybe make things easier for you, is that you can always just divide that number by 10,000. So if we do 23.4 divided by 10,000, uh, it's going to tell us the amount of pips and that rounded it obviously, but um, you get the picture. So we uh, go with answer A here. Question four, based on exhibit one, the all-in rate that Pearson will be quoted today by another dealer to sell the euro six months forward against the uh, the pound is closest to. So no additional reading here since we got to exhibit one, we're still just looking at exhibit one. And this question's pretty similar to number three we just did. Um, we're gonna be looking at six months forward. The tricky part is we're, we need to interpret um, our quote as because it just tells us we're selling it doesn't tell us that we're on the bid or the offer so we need to kind of understand what that means so if we're selling that means the dealer is going to be um, selling to us at the offer price so this is going to be our base number here and then we're going to be using our six month um, number to get our forward answer so let's pull in our answer here. So we're really, all we're doing is we're gonna be taking that spot rate 1.2457 uh, and then adding minus 54 pips or minus 54 divided by 10,000 to convert that to pips. It gives us 1.2403, answer B.